How you doing guys? Welcome back. It's LSP. It's currently the 13th of June 2022. I don't normally wear this hat, but I think today's a special occasion. So we're going to be talking about the markets. We're going to be talking about what could potentially be unfolding next. Uh, and for those that are not in the Discord, the link is in the description below. I've done my best throughout this entire, you know, uh, market downturn to keep people on the right side of the market, keep their powder dry. And thankfully, you know, most of the people in the Discord, because they've been there, they've been kind of paying attention, listening to some of the educational stuff. You know, it's kept a lot of people out of the markets while, you know, we're kind of driving towards that 20,000 level. So let's get over to the charts uh, and take a look and see what is happening. Now, obviously, we all woke up this morning. We can see that Bitcoin's having a bit of a run to the downside. But the one thing I really want to stress is when you're ready for this and you know it's going to happen, or at least you're preparing for the possibility that it could potentially happen, it doesn't surprise you. We've been saying for quite some time, two levels of interest, 20,000, 48,000, regardless of whatever happens, unless one of these two levels is hit, I personally, aren't, you know, I'm not doing anything. I will not engage with the markets until it hits 20,000, until it gets back above 48,000 when it comes to Bitcoin. The reason for these two levels is because when we look at price this way, this is the key level or key swing point, right? That was responsible for creating this downturn, right? And in doing so, it's the peak of the rally in this downtrend. It's completing the full move if it gets down to 20,000. So if it's traded above and through convincingly, so if we get something to the tune of, let's say we were around here and we started to rally, bounce, and then we went through it convincingly, that breaks market structure completely and it shifts sentiment, it shifts momentum back to the upside for a potential run, you know, to 70,000 plus. Obviously, that's not what's happened. You know, that's not what we've got. Uh, let's take a look here. So instead, We've been grinding lower, grinding lower, grinding lower. And obviously it's looking very, very likely now that we are going to be hitting this 20,000 level, potentially sub 20,000. I think when price starts to run, the ideal scenario right now, and this is really, really important and super, super key, right? The ideal scenario is that price accelerates very quickly into 20,000 and responds aggressively away from that level. If it bleeds and bleeds and bleeds and just slowly comes into this level, you get a little bit of a muted response. We're effectively going to get one of two things, either something like this where you get a little bit of response and then it slowly starts to grind and then it just drops again, or something like this where we consolidate for quite some time and then we get that secondary drop and it will just go straight through this liquidity pool. Those types of scenarios are the worst scenarios for us because it means one, it's a drawn out longer bearish move. And two, it's there's a much higher likelihood and potential right for price to continue going lower to sort of 15,000 and even sub 15,000. Um, and if you remember, the initial target um, that I did in the crash video was 14K, right, uh, which is a level that I had, you know, in mind for quite some time. Um, and again, you know, it brings us all the way down to roughly here, right? So we have to be mindful of all these things. This is a monthly level. If we go up to the monthly, you can see we've got to be mindful of this. There is still imbalances along the way. There's still a reason um, in terms of price delivery and order flow for Bitcoin to continue driving lower, Okay, which is obviously going to drag the rest of the market with it. Now, before we go over to Binance, I just want to quickly jump to Ethereum just to show you the difference between you know relative strength and relative weakness. As we were saying, Ethereum has been showing a lot of relative relative weakness recently. Um, and I did make a point of emphasizing, you know, that Ethereum of all of these pairs, you know, or, or currencies, sorry, of all of those, Ethereum's the one that was probably going to end up going, you know, um, off its, you know, off on its own, doing its own thing on its own page, because Ethereum's got a lot of problems right now. Okay. And before I continue with any more analysis. I am going to start to give you some practical uh, examples, you know, of what to do, or at least what I'm doing during all of this downturn, because let's be frank, I could talk about charts all day and all night, but the reality is if we can't do anything with that information, what's the point? And I know there's a lot of you out there that are probably panicking right now. You're a little bit uncertain on what's going to happen. I know most of the people in my discord aren't because they're used to seeing this kind of thing from me. And obviously, you know, I've been keeping people calm and I've been kind of guiding people 
you know, through what to do, what not to do, and so on. It's not financial advice, but it's always educationally, you know, based. But the point is, I'm going to give you practical examples of at least what I'm doing, like I said, so we can start to figure out the best way out of this, you know, this downturn. We'll just call it a downturn. Right? I don't really like using the word crash, but we'll, we'll just say downturn, right? So Ethereum, obviously, you can see it started to accelerate and it's accelerated straight through this liquidity pool. So that's gone. Where is the next level of key significance? Hmm. To be fair, and if we're going to be completely blunt, I don't really want to be seeing this, but and this doesn't mean that price is, of course, going to go down here. Right. But if this accelerates and we get a really nasty downturn on Bitcoin, OK, and Ethereum continues to have its problems, they held off doing the difficulty bomb. They've you know, held off and potentially pushed forward now again. Yeah. The merge and so on and so on. These problems are consistent. They keep coming up all the time. They're saying we're not going to, you know, um, you know, not, you know, not deploying the difficulty bomb or stopping it is basically not going to change the fact that we are going to merge this year and so on. We've heard all of this stuff before with Ethereum and people are getting a little bit fed up. And to be honest, there's people on the fence about putting their money into Ethereum in terms of the 32 minimum to stake. You've got people, you know, that are already in Ethereum that haven't staked their 32 that are just thinking, you know what, I'm going to pull my money from Ethereum for now. It's probably going to continue going lower. I'll grab it, you know, at 700 or a thousand or whatever, you know, the case may be. And when you look at the mechanics and the distance, between what's actually happening with Ethereum down to here, you're talking about another 40%. It really isn't that big of a deal. So another 40% down and you're hitting these key levels down here at 750. Yeah, and this is the monthly chart, which basically means if Ethereum does eventually come down to 750, I think that would be probably one of the, 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 the biggest opportunities uh, in terms of like the overall market um, that we're going to see within our lifetime. We're not going to see moves like this again. I think once this finally settles, regardless of however long it takes, maybe six months, maybe a year, maybe going into, you know, sort of mid next year, regardless of however this, however long this takes and however long it takes to unfold and pan out. Ultimately, I think this is the one for us. This is the final opportunity to start to really engage in the markets and really start to put ourselves in a position, right? That years and years down the line, we'll be able to uh, pass on what we've made to our children, you know, and our children's children. Uh, and I really mean that, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We won't see this again in our lifetime, I don't think. It's either that or everything just crashes and burns and, you know, the market ceases to exist, right? Which to be fair, that's a real possibility as well, especially with the way things are going in the world right now. But anyway, I digress. Let's go over to Binance and take a look at Binance because obviously a lot of us, are predominantly on the Binance Smart Chain. We're going to use this chart. You can see the absolute key level. You guys know I don't make this stuff up. I mean, it's gone up there. It's tagged that level absolutely. It's, it's such a finite level. It took me a while to actually find this level. You know, with the you know with all the analysis that I was doing, dropping down time frames, tick for tick for tick. But you can see, and obviously this was on the chart way before, as you guys know by now. Um, just shy of that level, get a nice little reversal. And then obviously prices started to accelerate to the downside. Um, there is liquidity below these lows. All right. So it's very likely, you know, that we're going to tag these lows, probably hit around about 200, possibly sub 200. Uh, the full liquidity puts us around about 185. So it is possible um, that Binance sees 185 at some point. Um, in doing so, you look at the ratio between Bitcoin hitting 20 and sub 20 um, and where that puts Binance, it should put Binance actually past this liquidity pool around about 175. Um, but again, worst case scenario, Bitcoin takes its time. It grinds into that 20K level, starts to go a little bit sub, a little bit of response away from that level. And then a reversal starts to go even deeper. Um, and that's going to put Binance much, much lower all the way down here at 148. All right. So that's worst case. Worst case scenario, obviously, we're going to have to be mindful. But the most important thing going forward now, all right, what do we do with all of this information? All right. The most important thing is, one, we have to be patient. We've got to be super, super patient. Keep your powder dry. Don't get excited in these markets. Don't get fearful in these markets. The reality is it's just numbers. It's just a market. These are just candles, red ones, green ones, regardless of whatever we're looking at, what we're reading and so on, it's very easy to be inundated right, and be pulled into this emotional response when it comes to the markets. right? That's not what we're here for. I keep saying this and I'll say it again. We're professionals. We're here to make 
you know, informed decisions based on the information that's being presented to us, right? I know, for example, right, that there are people who've DM me personally saying, what do you think to this, that, and the other? And I've been very careful how I respond because I don't want to give financial advice. But those people were asking me you know, asking me these questions when Bitcoin was around 50,000, 40,000, 30,000. And I'm saying, listen, just relax. Let the market tell you what it wants to do. Yeah, not a direct, don't do anything. The market's going to 20K. I have to be subtle about this because I don't want to be in a position where I'm telling people what to do. You know, it's, it's, I think that's irresponsible. But I think going through this process and this kind of, you know, back and forth with, with people either through DMs or Discord or whatever the case may be, puts people in a position where, where they can stay calm. They can see this unfolding. They watch the levels. They notice certain things. Price starts to run lower. It starts to go. And then ultimately... They don't engage because it's like, actually, what is the point of engaging unless Bitcoin hits 20K? If it doesn't and we see a reversal, let Bitcoin prove itself. Why do we want to be in, you know, engaging in these markets when it just doesn't make any sense? I haven't seen and we haven't seen anything from Bitcoin right that tells us that it's going higher. We hear everybody else telling us it's going higher. All of these so-called experts, these financial experts, you know, these billionaires telling us, yes, Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that, it's going higher. And the reason we're so predominantly focused on Bitcoin is because Bitcoin is the benchmark for everything, right? So we hear everybody else telling us what to do with our money. Buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin. Nobody's saying, hang on a minute, don't do anything. Just let Bitcoin prove itself. Why would I listen to a billionaire who's already a billionaire? to tell me what to do with my with my money. I'd rather listen to the market. I'd rather watch the market and let the market tell me, actually, I'm not quite ready to be going up yet. Just wait, just chill. There are some key levels. When these prices get, you know, when, when price gets to these, um, you know, these key levels, then we can start thinking about engaging. Now, I know there's also people out there who are in, say, reflection token projects and thinking, are these projects going to survive? Are these projects going to be around? Am I in the right ones? Should I be panicking? Should I be pulling my money out and everything? And to those people, I will say this. Again, the most important thing is if you are in a project, make sure you're in a project that you believe in a project that has a solid team, a project that has solid founders, and a project that is in the direction of what you expect is going to be good going forward. For example, when you look at a lot of different projects out there, these reflection token projects, and I'm just going to throw this out there in terms of just like a loose analogy, not an analogy, but a, you know, a loose example. There is, let's say, you know, a, a project out there does a launch pad for argument's sake, right? And that launch pad launches cryptocurrency, you know, projects in this type of market where it's going to be a little bit challenging for you know projects to be launching unless they do certain things you know and that project for me personally will struggle a lot more than a project that is for example putting money outside of the cryptocurrency market and investing in say you know i don't know a, a restaurant just for argument's sake i know these are stupid examples but it's a good way to really sort of explain the difference between making money outside of cryptocurrency and depending on cryptocurrency. This is a massive, massive difference. When you have projects that are solely dependent on cryptocurrency and the cryptocurrency market, that project is going to struggle during this downturn. All right. So whatever projects that you're in, make sure that that project is solid. Make sure that the technology, the services, the products that they are in the process of developing and delivering are have a use case everywhere not just in cryptocurrency, but also outside of cryptocurrency in the traditional markets, traditional finance and traditional world, right? So NFTs, big one. NFTs are going to be around for a very, very long time. For those of you that don't know, there was actually an article posted, um, thanks to one of my members for, for showing me this, but there was an article that was posted um, where a subpoena, I believe it was, or um, it was, I've tried to find the, the article again. I had to quickly scan through it yesterday at like two o'clock in the morning, but um, the the papers were served using an NFT, which is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I, you know, fair enough, I'm not sure what's going on. And I hope, you know, that kind of all sorts itself out. I don't wish any ill on anybody, but the, the legal firm served the papers to this person or, or company using an NFT. That is phenomenal and definitely something that is going to be incorporated into our world. NFTs are going to play a huge role in everything that happens going forward. Focus on projects that are looking for revenue outside of cryptocurrency, but are also incorporating NFTs, but also incorporating means 
to create a sustainable ecosystem and so on and so on and so on. Don't look for projects that are hype. Don't look for projects that claim insane APYs. Don't look for projects that make no sense. If you're in a project or if you're looking to get into a project and you're seeing something like, we guarantee this, we promise this, we just be careful. Just be really, really careful. Remember, this is your money and you want your money to be around in years to come and you also want your money to be growing in years to come and you also want, especially with reflection tokens and these dividend style tokens to be paying you in years to come. All right. So with all of that said, I will be updating everybody later this evening, probably going to jump on on a live stream. I hope everyone's having an absolutely fantastic day or evening wherever you're on the world. And remember, when things get like this, just go and put the kettle on, make yourself a nice cup of tea or coffee or whatever your you know choice of beverage is. Just chill, relax, let the market do its thing. Trust me, there will come a time when this is going to turn and price is going to start moving to the upside. We will go from bear to bull eventually. And with all of that said, Take care, guys, and I'll speak to you soon. Ciao for now.